This investigative look into the migration of the Israelites was inspired by a simple search I did with my family's last name. In Portugal, about the 17th and 18th century, many persons bearing the surname of Rodrigues and Mirage were condemned to death at the stake or to lifelong imprisonment on the grounds that they were Jews and refused to convert to Christianity. I knew nothing about this growing up. I'm a Roman Catholic. My parents are Roman Catholics. My grandparents are Roman Catholic. None of our relatives talked about this connection to the Jews of Portugal. It's pretty exciting to me, and it was also shocking. Welcome to the Mirage Network. I am Unapologetic Rob. I have a guest here that is going to shed some light on this very topic. I'd like to welcome Dr. Michael Hines. Thank you, Rob, for this opportunity to be a part of the program. Before I begin, I'd like to give thanks to my elder Shadrach, who is the founder and master teacher of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries of Toronto, Canada. This is where I got my, my education, my enlightenment. This is where I was able to tell the difference between education and speculation. And this is what I would like to share with you today, an opportunity to present a new way of thinking that would enhance the educational process of all individuals. Well, my very first question is the million dollar question for me, is what are the Jews doing in Portugal? You know what, that's a $10 million question for me too. The, the essence to this question has to do with the fact that you use the term Jews. And I always say that if you show me a person who say that they are a Jew or a Reubenite, a Benjamite or a Levite, mm -hmm. in today's world, I will show you a person that is not telling the truth. Because no one knows from which tribe they came. If the person has said Israel or Israelite, then that puts an entirely different perspective on the matter. The reason being, we have been enslaved. And when I say we, I'm talking about the Israelite nation. We have been enslaved for 400 years. That's a long time. Not one drop of record. No records were kept. So who then can say with any degree of certainty which tribe they're from? This is why we are more general in the statement, and we say Israel or Israelites. Now, to answer your question, Portugal was, used to be a kingdom of Iberia, and so was Spain, what is now called Spain. They, they, they probably had another name for it at the time. But this was one of the countries, if you will, as a matter of fact, under the name of Iberia when it used to be one, that our Israelite forefathers settled about the year 711. So I can imagine they came from Timbuktu to Cordova and elsewhere in Spain, and this they were there for several, several years, from 711 to about 1500. So I can imagine then that, yes, they would be Israelites in Spain and in Portugal and elsewhere in the Mediterranean region. Now, you said about slavery... Um, the people you're talking about, the Israelites, are they different from the, the people in Jerusalem today? <laughs> the answer to that question would be yes. Mm -hmm. And to give you the proper details, I would have to go to the scriptures to show the evidence. And in this, this uh, setting, we are not going to go to the scriptures. We are going to stay within the framework of history and culture. However, mm -hmm. having said that, the entire comprehensive view of this subject matter is spiritual. And this has to be understood, but we are not using the scriptures to, to bring the point okay. across, because then people get a little bit confused. Now, just to clear it up a little bit for myself, mm -hmm. are you saying that the children of slavery are descendants of the Israelites? That is correct, oh, Okay. Yes. And we could prove that at least a dozen different ways. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to start? 
Well, I mean, if you want to start with Portugal, and I, and I think you, you mentioned some very interesting uh, subject matter there, the, the point that your ancestors were yes. having such a difficult time, just like my ancestors, because we are connecting as the same family. We may not look alike, mm -hmm. but I, this is part of what we are trying to establish, a new way of thinking. Uh, a thinking that allows for depth of character and not just superficial commentary. In other words, what I'm suggesting here is you cannot tell the nationality of a person by just looking at them. You have to go deeper than that. I see. You have to understand the, the purpose of that individual. And, and in this entire framework, I'll tell you what I see. I see a king who has an objective of punishing his children for their disobedience to him, even his firstborn. And he then has set a time span for their enslavement, 400 years, even in the new Egypt that is now called the United States of America. The point is, at the time when that was done, and even at the time of, of Portugal, that United, Nation, United States did not exist. Mm -hmm. So how did these things happen? It's like a chessboard. You see pieces being put in different places to form a comprehensive unit to accomplish a specific task. Most of the activity behind the scene is spiritual, highly spiritual. But what most people understand is totally physical. So they're missing out on 67% of the background of this subject matter. Now, now my father's last name is Rodriguez, and my mother's last name is Mirage. And like I read in the opening, they were persecuted for being Jews. Now, were they converted to, to being Jews, these people, my ancestors? You know, I cannot give a definitive or uh, correct answer to that question. But I could tell you this. The Israelites, as I said before, they settled in Iberia under an Islamic banner in the year 711 from Africa. They came all the way from Timbuktu to Iberia, and they even went further even to Provence in France. Mm -hmm. And they were there from the seventh century, uh, actually from the eighth century, to the 15th century. That's a long time. And that's a, the length of that time could involve changes in, in appearance. But that's not the issue here. Yes, I could say that the Israelites of Jerusalem in the day of Moses and Paul were rich in the melanin, mm -hmm. but there is much more to an Israelite than appearance. Uh, if the heart is not right, if the heart, and, and to have the heart right, the heart must be circumcised, and that individual must serve a specific God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, who created heaven and earth. If that covenant is not in place, then it doesn't matter what you look like or what you call yourself, then it nullifies everything. Now, what started this migration? That's the, the, the heart of the question, the, of the matter that we are dealing with here. It is, as I said before, a judgment call. The judge is the king, the king of Israel. He is creator of heaven and earth. And because his firstborn, which would be the Israelites, disobeyed, he has sentenced them to 400 years of slavery as punishment. And as I said, this 400 years would have to be served in a country that will be defined as the new Egypt. And that country, as we know it today, this is going back to the days of Moses, but this country is the United States of America. And again, as I said, you know, we are limited here because we're looking at a historical perspective, but it's still within the spiritual framework. And they did not come straight from Jerusalem to Virginia. There's a lot that transpired through the Roman Empire, through, as we said before, Iberia, through North Africa, through even West Africa before all of that. So this, this is where we would have to go to flush out the historical perspective in a spiritual framework. 
Did this happen a, a little after 70 AD, the, that migration? That's correct. That's, that's when a lot of it began. And by 135 that year, the 99% of all the Israelites had already left the promised land. They were throughout you know, Asia, Africa, and then later on into the Roman Empire, um, around the Mediterranean to the south especially. So they spent about almost a thousand years traveling in Europe. They spent a lot of time, and it is, it is an amazing um, appreciation of the wisdom of the king of Israel because in the process, they helped to lay the foundation for a powerful Europe. And I say that because when we look at the economy, we see a lot of our doings as Israelites. We see the same thing in Western Africa. We see the same thing in Western Asia. And wherever we go, we put our hands in that country and lifted it up. But we did not benefit mm -hmm. from their prosperity. And that, that in itself should give you or give us an, an inkling of where we're headed. Because how is it that we lift up those that were in the garbage pail, and, but then they get to rule over us without our uh, ancestors receiving any benefit from their rulership. So while the Israelites are in, are in Europe for almost a thousand years, they're also in Africa as well? That is correct. They, they, they were in Africa, then they were transported from Africa to the, um, to the Americas, to Virginia. That's the Atlantic slave trade you're talking about. The Atlantic slave trade, okay. that's correct. But the key here, because let's look at it this way. The Europeans did not have the, the education to know about um, traveling the oceans. They, they mm -hmm. couldn't even run their own household. There were no, no colleges, no universities, nothing. These are people that were stuck in the garbage pail. So with our forefathers coming into Europe, they were lifted up because we injected a sense of appreciation, not only for what the surroundings, but also to look, because the key here is the covenant. This is the one motivational component that helped our Israelite forefathers. Because we had the covenant with the, the God of Israel, we were in a position, and, and according to the covenant, we had to teach our children we were in a position then to be strong and confident on education. And we're not just talking about memorizing stuff. We're looking at a comprehensive perspective to know what is written, why it's written, and how to take advantage of it from different perspectives. We're looking at a holistic educational process, right? And whereas the European, even today, theirs is, is lateral. It, it goes out, but there's not, it doesn't ever you know, end at anything, whereas ours continue to, to encircle mm -hmm. the earth, around and around the earth. All I'm suggesting is that we got our knowledge from our Father, and we return to him the praises and the glorification in the process. That is the cyclical manner of the comprehensive manner I'm talking about. There is no lateral where it falls off the edge or, or something of that nature. Or you can't tell the rest of what you're talking about, like what does it mean? So this is why I'm suggesting that there's a lot that the Europeans have learned from the Israelites mm -hmm. at no profit to the Israelites. Now, when, when Israel mm -hmm. left their homeland... Were they slaves throughout all these different nations that they uh, went into, and even in Africa? Or were they like the common man? Were they royalty? What was their life like? The Israelites had a great life in Africa, and places like Ghana and uh, you know, Timbuktu, Mali, all those places. They, they did some tremendous um, learning. They set mm -hmm. up an, Were these places built by them? Yes, a okay. lot of these places were built by them. Like I said, they had advanced knowledge. Mm. And, um, and, you know, later on, we, we can get into some of the details. They, they understood the agricultural process very well. And given the fact of 
the climatic conditions in any prevailing um, geographical location, they were able to take advantage because they understood certain things that most people may not even understand today or right. take for granted, whatever. So uh, they did well at Timbuktu. However, one of the things that they had to come to grips with was that a part of the cast of this universal uh, change were, was the Ishmaelites, who were known today as Mohammedans or okay. Muslims. Mm -hmm. And they controlled a lot of the, the economic um, routes mm -hmm. back then. So in order to get into those routes to sell your, your, your produce, you had to be in one accord with them to a certain degree. In other words, you had to make agreements, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes we take these agreements too far, you know, and before you know it, you know, we are intermarrying, and as we intermarry, we begin to serve their gods, which was another error, and so on and so forth. However, some of them, they pretend to do it, and then in the latter of the day, they will come back to their own culture. But nevertheless, you can only do that for so long before generations start to think, well, hey, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. So they profited well. They had gold. They had um, books were one of, the most, um, one of the most expensive commodities. And they, you know, they fished and you know, all the different products that they did in Western Africa. However, because they were associated with the Ishmaelites, that created a lot of confusion, created a lot of competition, and one thing led to another, and before you know it, they're being sold by the Ishmaelites to the Christians. 